A very good evening and a warm welcome to all our esteemed guests and to dear learners. I am Dr. Ria Tukral from the Homeopathic Academy and we are here today to discuss a very interesting topic, differential diagnosis of lack remedies with Dr. Philip Bailey. We are thrilled to have Dr. Bailey live with us right now. As you know, Dr. Bailey has never done a webinar but for us, for the Homeopathic Academy, he is here with us today and we are really delighted. But before we go ahead with this webinar, since let, let the audience, you know, come to the platform, I don't want anyone to miss this. So until we have our audience, all of our audience for today, uh, I would like to introduce the Homeopathic Academy to you for only for the people who don't know about us. So let me quickly give THA a small introduction. So the Homeopathic Academy or THA as we call it is Bijan Rx effort towards digitalizing homeopathy and providing a platform for quality education online. THA offers you a range of online courses by well-known academicians on numerous subjects of homeopathy at undergraduate, postgraduate, UPSC and CME levels. All these courses are enriched with state-of-the-art audio-video technology, text and vector animations, giving you an HD quality audio and video experience made by a dynamic team of qualified doctors, video editors, and many more professionals. These courses will perfectly complement your studies to make learning an extraordinary experience. On your screens, you can see some of our courses currently streaming on our website www.thehomeopathicacademy.com. You can also see the course on comparative homeopathic psychology by Dr. Philip Bailey. Here, Dr. Bailey will help us understand the psychological essence of polycrest remedies with their comparisons. So let Materia Medica come alive on your screens and enroll in Dr. Bailey's online course at our website www.thehomeopathicacademy.com. Thank you so much for listening. Coming back to this webinar, Dr. Bailey, can we please have you here with us? Let the learners see you live with us. Uh, just turn on my camera. Hello. Hello, everybody. Yes, so we can, can see, see you. Thank you so much for being here. And although you need no introduction, but please allow me to tell everyone a little about you. Please. So, Dr. Philip Bailey, he is a world-renowned therapist and author. He conducts multiple workshops and seminars on classical homeopathic prescribing, counseling and family constellation therapy, attending medical professionals and other people from the world over. He has a great professional experience. He has studied at the School of Homeopathy in UK. He has completed a course in family constellation therapy in Copenhagen. He has a work experience of, uh, you know, a few years in as a homeopathic general practitioner in Perth. He is a psychotherapist and counselor in Perth. He was a junior youth psychiatrist in Copenhagen itself. He has a very vast teaching experience. He's a lecturer in Mentals Materia Medica in Perth Academy of Natural Medicine. He has given advanced mental seminar all over the world, including Moscow, Prague, Oslo, London, Munich, and many more. And as we already know, he has a, a few publications in homeopathy, the most famous, I think, the homeopathic psychology, which I think every one of us has read and we try to follow it in our practice. Also, there's the lack remedies in practice, carcinosinum or materia medica, and also a publication called I'll Meet You There, Living Beyond All Ideas of Right and Wrong. Also, to inform you all, Dr. Philip Bailey also gives online consultations through his website, W, uh, Dr. Philip Bailey dot net. So that's a little, a little about you, sir. I hope 
it was not too less, not too much. So thank you for being here with us. And before I start this session with you, let me explain our learners how this interface works. So on the right hand side panel of your screens, you have a short chat box. You can type your questions or whatever message you have for Dr. Bailey right there and press the button next to it and send it to us. I request you all to send your questions only after Dr. Bailey's lecture is over as that might disturb him and we wouldn't want that. So without wasting time, let's start learning so please uh, start with a few words uh, i am i think everybody is dying to hear from you thank you Ria. it's lovely to be here and as you said it's the first time i've given a webinar so it's quite exciting for me um it was a great honor to be asked to present um 10 modules to the um homeopathic academy on comparative material medical of the mentals and this is the way i really enjoy teaching and that is doing comparative material medica i find it it's really the way we have to work in our clinic when we see a case when we see a case with certain physical and mental characteristics we have to compare several similar remedies to work out what the correct remedy is for the case so this is how i like to teach and this is how i have presented the modules in the um comparative material medica um yeah. modules for the homeopathic academy it's also the way we're going to be looking at the lack remedies today i've been yes. using lack remedies i don't know maybe 15 years and i'm um, gradually learning how to recognize more and more lack remedies as constitutional remedies yes. and of course each lack remedy has quite a few other remedies that they resemble both in physical and psychological features so this is what we'll be looking at today they the uh, differential yes, diagnosis, some of the main lack remedies. So you heard him. That is what we are going to learn today. So without wasting any more time, uh, let's start the session, sir. So we have received a lot of questions already. Uh, let me uh, put up those questions to you on behalf of our enrollees. So uh, Dr. Philip, uh, before you explain the differential diagnosis of lack remedies, from a mental point of view, can you remind us a little of the main psychological themes that we see in lack cases? Certainly. So, most of the themes revolve around bonding or lack of bonding between a child and its mother. And typically in lack cases, you hear that there was a lack of bonding between the patient as a child and its mother. But this produces two opposite uh, polarities in terms of symptoms. On the one hand, you, it produces someone who cannot connect to other people. There's a sense that um, they cannot receive nurturing and they cannot, they don't know how to connect because as a very small child, there was that lack of bonding with a mother. Really, the child when bonds with a mother, it learns how to bond with other people. And if it doesn't learn this bonding with a mother for whatever reason, then it's unable to bond or connect with other people and therefore it's unable to receive support and emotional nurturing from other people. So on the one hand, we get people who say that they feel separate and alone and unable to bond. And on the other hand, we get the opposite extreme where there is no separation between them and their mother or between them and their partner. So there's this issue of very weak boundaries in many lack cases. It's a kind of psychic openness and it leads to extreme empathy so many lack people will say that they can feel they feel what other people are feeling to such an extent that it's very painful for them when other people are suffering so there's lack of boundaries it's a bit like the newborn baby that is completely one with the mother there's no boundaries there's no sense of separateness so this is one extreme you see in lack cases the other extreme being no connection or very little connection Okay, so and you see the same. You see the same in terms of the relationship with the patient's mother. Either the mother tends to be cold and aloof, or the mother was too enmeshed, too close to the child. Another very typical theme that we see in lack cases is what I call the spirit earth split, and this is where the lack person turns towards spirituality as a kind of um, a refuge 
from emotional pain, but, but it's kind of an artificial refuge because it's not true spiritual experience. They build up this kind of fantasy world of spirit. It's quite an intellectual spiritual world. And they judge anything earthly or physical as, or mundane and human as inferior. So there's this kind of unnatural split. You also see this split in um, Thuya cases and in some Platina cases. Okay. One thing I've seen in very many lack cases is that they are single mothers. Um, I say about maybe four out of five lack cases are living maybe more on female lack treatment. And maybe half of those or more were single mothers. So there's a very strong predominance of single mothers. And with this, with this come the issue of lack of support. Even if the lack patient is not a single mother, you hear the word support and you hear the word, you hear the phrase, I don't get support, nobody is supporting me, repeated over and over again. And it's partly true and it's partly a delusion. You actually get in lack cases, the delusion there is no support available. So quite often, for instance, a lack patient might have a family who wants to support them, but the lack patient does not see that or does not trust the support and thinks that the family is cold. Uh, just a couple of other points that we see in many lack cases. One is a strong issue of feminism. Mm -hmm. Lack women are very strong and independent and they don't trust men. They tend to be quite focused on the harm that the patriarchy has done to women and to children. And they tend to be very passionate about protecting and promoting the interests of women and children. And finally, there's a lot of unresolved grief in most lack cases. They hold on to grief. Of course, the grief is often there from childhood. There's often a sense of grief, profound grief very early on when the child fully bond with the mother and feels alone. And this grief is then repeated many times in relationships later on in life. Thank Some of the And, okay. And uh, now we come to look at individual lack remedies and the differential diagnosis. So which remedy are you going to discuss first for us? So first I'm going to discuss lack leoninum or lion's milk. So okay. lack leoninum is not, it's not the most common of lack remedies. And um, as with many of the other lack remedies, I've seen it far more often in women than men. And in lack leoninum, there's a very big difference between the presentation of the male and the female cases. And I'm going to be talking principally about the female lack of anonym cases today. So one of the main themes that we see in lack leo or lack leonanum is um, a history of violence. Very often the child was exposed to violence. When the patient was a child, they were exposed to violence in the home. There could have been sexual abuse or, or just physical abuse. More emotional abuse, it's usually physical abuse as well. And later on, there's usually an attitude that men are dangerous. And what tends to happen in the anonym cases is they get involved with men who are physically abusive. So there's often a history of someone coming for treatment who's either in an abusive relationship or they've gotten out of physically abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the lion is a very strong animal. It's the, it's the king of the jungle, the king of animals. And we do see a, a, a power in the likely an animal woman. And yet again, you have a polarity in these cases. When they are with an abusive man, they often feel powerless and are able to stop the abuse. When they leave the abusive situation, they tend to come across as powerful women. One thing we see over and over again is obesity. Black and Island women are very often very overweight. And it seems to me this is often a protection against sexual abuse. Um, can you hear me? Because the sound has gone strange in my microphone. So I can hear you. You can hear me? Oh, good. Okay. So, one of the typical presentations of the Latley and Anna woman is someone who is anxious and depressive, but very much in control. They learn not to show weakness. This is their coping mechanism, but how they've coped with dangerous life up till now. They tend to appear alone and strong. Once they get out of abusive relationships, mm -hmm. they usually focus on healing, first healing themselves. And often come a long way into healing themselves. Healers who do often very deep healing work in various 
modalities. And once they have achieved a certain level of health emotionally, they often become healers themselves and often very gifted healers. So today I'm going to look at the differential diagnosis between lightly and minimum and three groups of remedies. One is natrum remedies, the second is ignatia, and the third is lack of vinum or cow's milk. All right, so, so uh -huh. can you tell us in what ways ignatia cases resemble lacleonynum psychologically? I can, I'm just trying to <laughs> figure out how can to control my notes on the computer. Uh, okay. So, first of all, in terms of resemblance between Ignatia and Latvian, um, the male and the female qualities are very strong in both of these remedies. So, in other words, if we look at Ignatia, we have someone who's very emotional, very sensitive, often has a very subtle um, appreciation of the arts, and also a subtle appreciation of their internal emotional life. That's the feminine side. But they're also usually very strong women who will fight for what they want, who have a large temper and can be very assertive and even dominating. This is true of Lac, Leolinum and Ignatia, the very strong feminine and the very strong masculine. Secondly, Ignatius tend to be attracted to very strong men and powerful men. And Lac, Leolinum women are also often attracted to men they consider powerful. Mm -hmm. Certainly, of course, Ignatia is a great grief remedy and holds on to grief for a very long time. And all lack remedies do this. So you certainly see this strong tendency of holding on to grief and sometimes quite dramatic grief reactions or release of grief um, in lack of the alignment. <coughs> um, right, so, I think they have the uh, similarity between the two. Okay. And how do you think they differ from each other, like Leonidum cases from Ignatia cases? So the first thing to look at is what, what the patient fears most. And what I find is that Ignatia fears rejection most, particularly romantic rejection. And what Le Leonidum fears most is violence. So there's quite a difference there in what they fear most. Secondly, of course, Ignatia doesn't have all the lack issues, the lack remedy issues that I discussed at the beginning of the case. For instance, very strong mother issues attending to rescue people. Actually, that's one thing I didn't mention that we usually see codependency in lack cases, which is the tendency to rescue people or the need to look after people. We don't see this very much in Ignatia cases. Thirdly, the spirit earth split, um, we don't see much in Ignatia cases. So, in general, the lack issues are missing. Okay. Thirdly, I would say that um, on average, Ignatia clients are more refined than Latley and Einem. Latley and Einem can have a very, have a very fire, fine and refined intellect, but usually physically they don't appear refined like Ignatia does. Finally, there's one characteristic that's highly typical of Latley and Einem women, which I haven't mentioned yet. And that is that they are very often attracted to African men. Now, where I practice in Australia, my Latvian and Island women have been white Caucasian women. And they've often had relationships with black African men. So this has been a, a strong feature of the case. And also a strong attraction to all things African. They've often moved to Africa and lived in Africa. So this fascination with Africa, also, we also don't see usually in Ignatia. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, you also said that natrum remedies resemble lac leonidum psychologically. So uh, you said you will differentiate between them. So can you tell us how they resemble each other? I can. Uh, actually, I'm just finding natrum. Okay. So it's quite common for lac remedies uh, to be confused with natrums in general. And there are many reasons for this. One is that Natrums hold on to suppress grief, the sec just like lax. The second thing is natrums need to be in control and they're quite controlled people. This is true of most lack remedies and it's very, very much true of lack leonidum. They always appear in control, more so than some other lack remedies. For instance, lack leonidum and lack delphinum and also lack ovis. They do not appear so much in control. Mm -hmm. Secondly, natrums like lack like, uh, leonidum are very highly sensitive emotionally strongly feel emotional pain and particularly rejection. 
thirdly, most natrums um, have a tendency to a lack of self-esteem, which is an issue in most lack remedies, including lack leoninum. Mm -hmm. Natrums are prone to anxiety, but with a, an appearance of being in control on the outside, and this is very much what we see in lack leoninum cases as well. And uh, finally, all the, all the emotions tend to be suppressed and hidden in nature, it's particularly mm -hmm. grief. And in Latvia and Ireland, we see suppression of anger and suppression of grief. Thank you, sir. So uh, given the similarities between natrum and lacleonynum, can you also tell us about the differences between them? Sure. First of all, I'll just mention that I find natrum muriaticum and natrum sulfuricum to be the closest psychologically to lacleonynum. So both of these natrums are more controlled than lacleonynum. So you get the tendency that you can't get through to the real person often with natrum muriaticum, natrum sulfuricum. L Lackley and anum is not that controlled. Secondly, Lackley and anum tends to be very ambitious and to often to go very far in their career. It's similar to nature in this respect. There's a, a strong fiery element that makes them ambitious and makes them excel. And this tendency of being ambitious and excelling is not so typical of the natrums. Thirdly, you don't see all those typical lack issues that I've already mentioned in most natrum cases. And finally, the focus on a history of violence and a fear of physical violence is not so common in natrum cases. Okay. So uh, you also mentioned, sir, that lack leoninum can be confused with other lack remedies. So please tell us a little about that as well. So one remedy that I find um, is easily confused sometimes in Latvian anum is Latbovinum or cow's milk. Um, one reason is that Latbovinum tends to need to be in control, very much like Latvian anum. And another is that they're often very overweight. So a very overweight patient with a lot of lack issues um, who needs to be in control and also tends to appear like a victim. We see this in Latbovinum and in Latvian anum. There's a tendency to feel like a victim, and there may have been physical violence like lacleonynum. Lacbovinum is highly emotional, um, more so than some of the other lacs, probably about as emotional as lacleonynum. It's highly depressive, and lacleonynum is often depressive, and is also prone to a lot of anxiety. So, in these ways, they resemble each other. Okay, so. Uh, so also, can you tell us a little about lac felinum? I would like to know how it, you know, differentiates with it, with leoninum. First, first of all, I'll just talk about the differences between lac bovinum and lac leoninum. So, okay. in lac bovinum, there tends to be a lot more passivity than in lac leoninum. In lac leoninum, they can feel helpless when they're in a dangerous relationship, but the rest of the time, they seem quite assertive and motivated and ambitious. Like Lovinum, on the other hand, is quite passive, and this is not surprising if you think of the difference between a cow and a lion. So you have a lot of passivity, a sense that they can't move out of their stuckness emotionally or their stuckness in their situations in life. Along with this passivity, we have a sense of being milder. They seem like a much milder person, less powerful, and they tend to seek to please, which is not typical of like Leonardo. And along with this mildness is a very indecisive nature. So lacrovinum is one of the most indecisive of remedies, which is not typical of lacrovinum. And finally, lacrovinum has this very characteristic fear that they will die soon, or rather a delusion that they're about to die, which is not something we see in lacrovinum. So you mentioned lacrovinum. Uh, of course, the two cats, the two cats you'd expect to resemble each other, the big cat, the lion, and... Um, a small cat, and there are a lot of similarities. If you look at lac cases, I like to divide them into two basic groups. One is the proud lacs, and the other are the lacs who are, who are not proud or tend to lack self-esteem. In general, I include lac leoninum as one of the proud lacs. They tend to be quite, have quite a lot of pride. And the other proud lacs are lac felinum, lac humanum, and lac equinum, so human milk, cat's milk, and what's the other one? Uh, horse, horses milk. Horses milk. Mm -hmm. 
So, so this is a similarity with Lapsulina, but they are um, somewhat proud. A second similarity is that there's quite a lot of grace. You know how the big cats and small cats are both quite graceful, graceful in their movements, graceful in their interactions with people. So there's this certain sense of grace that I see in both Lapsulina and Lapsulina. Now, what are the similarities and differences we see? Well, of course, they've all got the lack issues you see in money lack cases. Um, specifically, lack feline tends to have a lot of ambivalence. Um, now, it comes out most strongly in relationships where they feel ambivalent about their relationship, which means they want to connect, they don't want to connect. They move towards their partner, they move away from their partner. This is not something we see typically in lack feline cases. What you see more in a lack feline case, if they are in a relationship with an abusive partner, they feel a great deal of love and they feel afraid. It, it's all very confused and mixed up. It's not this on, off, very clear ambivalence that we see in, in like, um, Finland. It's much more confused. There is love, there is loyalty, there is fear, there is anger, all mixed up together. But in general, I would say that ambivalence is not a typical feature of clear Okay. Uh, so uh, when you're talking about lack felinum, I think uh, we might get confused with between lack felinum and cypria at times. So uh, mm. can you tell us how we how these are similar or how they are different? I will. First of all, I'll just recap some of the other typical features of lack felinum. Sure. So I would say the most characteristic feature of lack felinum, apart from ambivalence, is a need for freedom. Um, they hate to be pinned down, to be trapped in a situation. For instance, they don't like to work under a boss. And if they have a kind boss who lives, gives them a lot of freedom, then it's fine. But otherwise, they hate to be controlled. They cannot bear to be controlled by their partner. They don't even like hugs very often because it feels too restrictive. And they like to travel. It's, it's a very tubercular remedy. They like chain, they like stimulation, they like dance, they like to travel. Second, they tend to be quite an adaptable and flexible type, which also goes with, with it being a tubercular remedy. Um, so let's have a look at, as you mentioned, sepia. Let's just have a look at um, some of the similarities with sepia. They're actually very similar to sepia. In my practice, the hardest inferential diagnosis I tend to make, or have to make, is between like felinum, sepia, and carcinocinum. And because this differentiation between these three is so difficult on the mental level, I've, I've made it one of my modules in the Homeopathic Academy course that I present. The differentiation between sepia, lapfilinum, and carcinocinum. So all of these three remedies are very intuitive, and yet they also have a strong earthy side, down to earth. So a lot of intuitive remedies uh, are not so down to earth, not so practical and in the body. But in CP carcinosin and lepfilinum, we have these two extremes together. They're very intuitive, but they're also very down to earth and practical. In particular, all three of these types have a strong sensitivity to the body's energy, and they love to they love to sense the body's energy and to use the body's energy. For example, all three of these types, particularly CP and lepfilinum, are very much into yoga, and I've found the majority of yoga teachers that I've treated have either been CP or carcinocinum or lacrylinum constitutionally. The three of them love to dance and the three of them love to practice the healing arts. Um, and also they're very in tune with nature so they love to, to do gardening and, and they're very interested in herbalism and natural healing in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. A second similarity between sepia and lacrylinum is in relationships they tend to be independent and detached. Um, like Philanum in particular will often choose partners who give them a lot of freedom or even are away a lot of the time so that the like Philanum has a lot of freedom. Sepia, they like to have their freedom and they need a certain amount of freedom. But they don't need to be on their own as much as like Philanum does. The th a third similarity is anxiety is often strong in both of these constitutions, in Sepia and in like Philanum. And in both of these constitutions, it tends to be a quite a free-floating anxiety that's underlying there all the time, rather than only in specific situations. Both of these constitutions have a depressive tendency, and both are half-open emotionally. 
they're not very open like phosphorus, they're not very closed, like made from uranium. They kind of will open up if they trust the person where they're with. And finally, CPU and electron both have a lot of adventure and the physical challenges. They're both, for instance, they might like climbing trees, they're both tomboys when they're children, for instance. So there's, there's some of the main similarities. I'll talk now about the main differences between CPU and electron. So of course the most useful difference often is that we, we have all the lack issues in that field line and we don't tend to have the lack issues in sepia, such as codependency, such as the spirit birth split, such as very strong mother issues. The second difference is very important and very useful and this is that I find sepia to be very clear emotionally. Even if she's depressed, even if she's anxious, she's very easy to read emotionally. I find there's a great clarity emotionally in sepia, and the opposite in lactulinum. They are not easy to read. There's not a lot of emotional clarity. There's a kind of hidden quality and hard to differentiate the feelings with lactulinum. In fact, this makes lactulinum very different, difficult to differentiate from carcinocinum, because carcinocinum is very unclear emotionally. Thirdly, all, thirdly, all the lat remedies tend to be very idealistic. For instance, they will often campaign for nuclear disarmament or campaign for the environment. CPU, CPU is less idealistic, typically. Mm -hmm. both, both of these constitutions will tend to be repressed in relationships. CPU typically will become depressed if she's, if she's just a housewife and gives up her individual interests. Mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit different the repression in, with, with um, Lactulinum. Lactulinum will have a tendency to give, give away too much of her own interests and to give up too much for her partner. But um, what's the difference? I'd say one difference is that she doesn't become flat like sepia. Sepia tends to become flat and apathetic. And you don't see this mm -hmm. flat apathy in lactulinum. Mm -hmm. Rather, they will fight against the repression. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, you also said that lacfilinum can resemble tuberculinum psychologically. So in what ways are these two remedies similar? Good question. So as I've said, lacfilinum is quite a tubercular remedy. They love stimulation, they love change. They're quite flexible and impatient. So these are all characteristics of tuberculinum. They both have a strong love of exercise, of using the body. They're both quite grounded and also intuitive. As I've said about sepia and carcinosin, mm -hmm. it's also true to them that they are both intuitive and in the body, quite grounded and physical. They're both impatient and restless, and often both carcinosin, sorry, both lactulinum and tuberculinum will have a sharp intellect that is quite radical in its thinking. So they're alternative thinkers and they're sharp thinkers. So these are the main similarities I see. Okay, and so how, how can we differentiate? Yeah. The first difference, of course, is, as always, that you don't have the lack issues in tuberculinum. Mm -hmm. The second difference is that tuberculinum is less emotional than lacfilinum. And because it's less emotional, it tends to suppress emotions less and tends to have less depression and less anxiety. Along with that, tuberculinum is clearer emotionally. So like CP, you tend to know exactly where you stand with tuberculinum and what they're feeling. Whereas, as, as I've said, there's a tendency in of a lack of clarity with that phenomenon. And along with this tuberculinum, generally will have much clearer boundaries. And we tend to have weaker boundaries with lactulinum. For instance, they will be overwhelmed by somebody else's suffering, or they will not know when to stop helping another person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, tuberculinum tends to be more male. I tend to find lactulinum to be androgynous, like equal male and female. Tuberculinum is more male is more assertive and, and also more selfish. Okay. And finally, tuberculinum doesn't tend to have the issues of being dominated, which is an issue for lactulinum. They cannot bear to be dominated. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, sir. So are there any resemblances between lactulinum and medorinum? There certainly are. Um, some lactulinum seem very down to earth and can be difficult to differentiate from sepia. Other lacfilinum women in particular, but also men, seem very passionate and very expressive. Mm -hmm. And these lacfilinums can be quite different 
difficult to differentiate from the Dharanam, which is such a passionate remedy. So if we look first at the similarities, like Vilanam and Medranam are what I call all-rounders. And I mean that in terms of the four elements. They have strong water, earth, fire, and water elements. So they're strongly physical, they're in their body and down to earth. They're strongly emotional. They're often quite intellectual, that's the air element. And they're passionate, which is the fire element. So if you see someone with all these four elements strong, quite often either Lactulinum or Medorinum. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the passionate, adventurous and sensual features all come together to create a, a, a strong mm -hmm. vitality, a strong mm -hmm. impression, which you can see in some Lactulinum cases and in many Medorinum cases. Thirdly, both types are very sensitive, including very intuitive. Mm -hmm. However, they're not the oversensitive kind of psychic remedies like, for instance, Lillian Tigrinum or um, Moscow's, where you get a lot of hysterical reactions. They're not that sensitive, but they're intuitive and very sensitive. Okay. Fourthly, both tend to be independent and both tend to be quite social. So this combination of independence and being social is seen in the mm -hmm. and like forward. And finally, there is some tendency to anxiety and depression in both of these remedies. Okay, thank you, sir. And can you tell some differences between these two remedies as well? Sure. So, generally, the self esteem is lower in lactulinum. Um, lactulinums tend to be self critical. When they're younger, they tend to feel they're ugly or not intelligent enough. They tend to blame themselves. This is not a, a strong tendency in lactulinum. Secondly, ambivalence is such a strong feature in relationships in lactulinum, and it's not a strong feature in medoranum. Thirdly, the sexual passion is stronger in medoranum than it is in lactulinum. And along with that, in medoranum, you have a kind of magnetic quality, and they're very attractive. It's partly a sexual quality, but in general, there's a shiny magnetic quality, but you will also see an ignatian phosphorus, and you don't see this so much in lactulinum. And then finally, of course, you have the lack issues in lactulinum that mm -hmm. you don't get in lactulinum very much. Okay, sir. So uh, some of our live attendees wants to know the similarities and differences between carcinosin and lactulinum. So can you go into detail with that? Yeah, the, as I've said before, these two can be extremely similar and very difficult to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Even the physical appearance is so similar. Sepia, carcinosin, and lactulinum tend to have kind of slim, wiry bodies. Um, Lactulinum and carcinosinum have these mole, have a lot of black moles, um, both flat moles and raised moles, but very dark moles. So a patient would have a lot of these, um, what we call dysplastic nevi or black mole, mm -hmm. is often either lactulinum or carcinosinum. Mm -hmm. They're both very earthy, down to earth. They both love yoga, typically. They both have low self-esteem. Carcinostinum is just as self-critical as lactulinum and will tend to deny herself even more so, actually, than lactulinum. Um, they're both highly intuitive. They both love to travel. We have this carcinostinum feature of mm -hmm. better for traveling. They both love travel. They both love adventure. They're both perfectionists. Very many lac constitutions are perfectionists, and this includes lactulinum, and it certainly includes carcinostinum as well. Yes, now, if we look at codependency or the need to be needed, you see this principally in lack remedies and carcinosinum. So if you have a patient who's very codependent, these are the most likely remedies to cover the case. Lack remedies and carcinosinum. Mm -hmm. And finally, they both hold on to a lot of grief and a lot of sadness. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're both quite that's very fascinating, sir. So what differences have you found between these on the mental level? So, first of all, um, although they can both be quite tough in terms of an external toughness, uh, the toughness is greater in carcinosinum. So they're both sensitive inside, but, but it looks like a tough individual on the outside with carcinosinum more so than lactulinum. Secondly, we have the very characteristic blunting or suppression of the life force and the emotions in carcinosinum. So there's often a kind of numbing or blunted effect, particularly emotionally in carcinosinum, which you don't see in lactulinum. Mm -hmm. They are both controlled and controlling, but 
This is stronger in Kasim Sanam. So Kasim Sanam appears in control and tends to control others more than Lakshmi Okay. The, the sense of a lack of ego is, is like the centerpiece of the Kasim Sanam essence, a lack of sense of self. This is not a big issue. You, you get a little bit of that in Lakshmi Lanham because they, they can give way too much to other people. But deep inside they know who they are. Whereas with Kasim Sanam it's not clear inside who they are. Mm -hmm. Lakvi is very typical ambivalence in general, but especially in relationships, which we don't see in Kasim Sanam. And of course, all the typical lack issues we mm -hmm. see in Lakvi Yes, sir. So that's about Lak Leonainam. Can you also tell us a little about Lak Ikhuainam and its differentials? So Lak Ikhuainam is one of these one of these four proud remedies that belong to the Lak family. They often have a lot of pride. In fact, I find the Lak Equinum is the most proud of the Lak remedies. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to think of the horse as a noble animal, and nobility and pride tend to go together. So when you come across a Lak Equinum patient, they, they're very highly strung. And along with this highly strung quality is frustration. If you think about the domesticated horse, the horse is a tremendously energetic animal and when it's domesticated, it's stopped. It's put in a, it's put in a stable. It's put in a paddock. It can't move. move. It's, it's restrained by reins, and this creates great tension inside. And this, this we see in lack of quantum cases. The emotion that they they talk about again and again is frustration. So if you have a a patient who keeps talking about frustration, mm -hmm. you should consider lack of quantum. They feel blocked, but where is some? Constitutions feel blocked internally. Like a coin feels blocked externally. Like a horse, they feel there are external obstacles that are always being put in their way. They blame people and the environment for blocking them from moving forward. It's very interesting the language that Lucky Corn and Field uh, uses. They use horse language. They say, um, they say, I want to leap forward, but I'm reined in. People keep reining me in. They say, I've been saddled with this imposition. I've been saddled with this responsibility. They, they, they use all this fascinating horse language that you don't see in other constitutions. Mm -hmm. Their energy is often very high. There's a tendency to, to be manic or to be speedy. So they have a high energy like a lot of horses have. They can be quite arrogant and insensitive. They're very often um, community-minded. This is one thing I forgot to mention about lax in general, is mm -hmm. because they don't have very close one-to-one -one relationships, they make up for this by focusing on community connections and developing community. And this is very strong in like Equinum. Like Equinum is often a community leader and they like to teach people how to run communities, how to develop communities, but they can be quite arrogant and impatient when they're teaching people. Mm -hmm. I have to slow down, but I'm getting a bit speedy talking about like Equinum. Mm -hmm. no, I'll take a breath. So, what happens with lack of is eventually they get burnt out. This kind of speedy, intense, frustrated energy eventually burns out. And when they get older, they become spacey. They kind of seem spaced out and vague. They become forgetful, they become ungrounded. Mm -hmm. And they often seem spiritual, but are not really here. And they also get a lot of anxiety as they get older and, and more spacey. Yes. Um, so some keynotes that can help you to notice like equinum as a remedy is that they're often allergic to horses, just mm -hmm. as like Philanum is often allergic mm -hmm. to cats. Yes. They often very much love horses and, and have ridden horses a lot in their childhood. Mm -hmm. And um, the differential diagnosis here is often between lachesis, like mm -hmm. Philanum and Ignatia. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so since you mentioned lachesis, uh, so I, I think oh, they must have a lot of similarities. Can you tell us the similarities between the two? Yeah. So if you get um, particularly a, a woman who's highly strong, highly intelligent, and kind of feels frustrated and wound up inside, and also rather arrogant, then this is a picture of both lachesis and lack mm -hmm. equinum. Okay. Both types tend to be highly creative because the fire element is strong. Mm -hmm. Both types tend to be highly sexual again, mm -hmm. because the fire element is strong. And both will tend to suffer when their self-expression is blocked. When self-expression is blocked, they both become very tense inside. 
both tend to be anxious and both have a lot of impatience and tend to be hurried. They even both tend to burn out and become kind of vague and spacey when they get chronically stressed. So even that vague spaciness is common to the two types. Okay. So, uh, so please also tell us about the differences between these two on the mental plane. So as I mentioned, lack equinum tends to feel that the obstructions are external, whereas it tends to be more of a sense of internal blockage in lachesis. Mm -hmm. They feel blocked inside and, they, and that makes them frustrated. Secondly, there's more sense of suspicion and paranoia in lachesis. You do, you do see it a little bit in lack equinum, but not as much. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, having mentioned suspicion, I should say that although usually lachesis is more paranoid and suspicious, you do get actual psychosis or insanity in lack like equinum postpartum. So after giving birth, you can get an episode of insanity in lack um, equinum that you don't see in lachesis. You don't. You rarely see actual um, psychosis in lachesis. Thirdly, awesome. of course, you don't have the horse features in lachesis. The horse mm -hmm. language, the love of horses, and the mm -hmm. allergy to horses. Mm -hmm. Fourthly, you don't have the lack, the lack issues in lachesis. Okay. And finally, uh, you tend to have more jealousy and more loquaciousness in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you also mentioned that Ignatia can also be confused with lack of quinum. So can you tell us the similarities between the two? Mm. Ignatia can be quite similar to both lack of quinum and... Um, what was I just talking about? I'm going blank. And um, lachesis, in the mm -hmm. sense that they are proud they are refined, they often have a very strong and subtle intellect, and they're passionate. So all of these qualities, uh, it's really a combination of the water element and the fire element. It gives the pride and the sensitivity and the um, subtlety in Ignatia and in Lachicoinum. They're both passionate types, and they both have very strong grief issues, um, with a suppression of grief, holding on to grief. Furthermore, they're both very good communicators. I've found that Lachie Quinum and Ignatia are very good with the spoken word and as singers. They're both often very passionate singers and very good communicators. Okay. They're both highly reactive emotionally. So um, Lachie Quinum will fly off the handle when they react emotionally and so will Ignatia. And they're both relatively uh, masculine. So Ignatia women and Lachie Quinum women are relatively masculine. Hmm. Okay, so also, sir, please tell us the differences between these two, Ignatia and Lachiquinum. So very often in a Lachiquinum case, the emotional complaint is frustration. They just feel, they just can't move forward, I'm frustrated. This is not typically the, the main emotional complaint with Ignatia. Usually it's more to do with grief and anxiety with Ignatia. Secondly, Ignatia isn't as community orientated as Lachiquinum. You also tend to get more panic and more phobias in Ignatia cases, including, for instance, some um, hysterical reactions like uh, globus hystericus. Okay. We don't have the lack issues in, in typically in Ignatia cases, for instance, codependency and um, very strong mother issues. And in Ignatia, the whole case revolves around personal love or lack of personal love, whereas um, that's only one aspect of the case, usually in lachicoinum cases. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you also mentioned earlier that lack felinum and lack equinum can be very similar psychologically. So what are these similarities? I, I think I've already covered that. So I'll go on to lack humanum because we've, we've okay. already covered the lack yes. felinum. Yes. So lack humanum, um, it's funny, I, I say it's the most humane of the lack remedies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not surprising mm -hmm. because it's made from human milk. But they really are very humane people in the sense that they're often focused on helping humanity more than any other lack remedy. Now, all the lack remedies are very um, idealistic and will often help in an idealistic way. But the most humane of all, the most um, humanitarian of all is lack humanum. They're also one of the most detached and analytical of the lack remedies. Okay. Often come across as very detached. They're very often healers. They've done their own healing and then they become healers themselves and often very gifted and intuitive healers. But like other lack types, they often don't trust men. Mm. One thing that's very characteristic of lack humanum is they tend to feel special. 
they tend to feel they've been given a mission and they're special and God has given them a mission to in some way help humanity. And this can be a delusion of grandeur. Okay. They tend to feel very much alone, even more so than other lack remedies. It tends to be often the center of the case that they feel alone and unsupported. Very, very often they're single mothers. And can you still hear me? Because the sound has gone a bit, a bit funny here. Yes, sir, I can You can still hear me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whereas a, whereas a lot of lack remedies um, have a distant relationship with their mother, it's often the opposite with lacking mind and that they become too attached to their mother or they become too attached to their child. The child becomes everything to them and they exclude their husband because they are so enmeshed with the child. They even will have the child sleeping with them until the child is six or seven or eight years old, which in Western countries is unusual. And they might continue breastfeeding until the child is five or six, which again in Western countries is very unusual. Okay. One highly characteristic feature of lacking cases is the tendency to psychosis or insanity after mm -hmm. childbirth, which as I've mentioned, mm -hmm. we also see in Lachyquinum. Now the differential diagnosis, the remedies that resemble Lachyquinum closest are other Lach remedies, um, Ignatia, mm -hmm. Platina, and Natromeriaticum. Okay. So uh, since you mentioned Ignatia, so in what ways do they resemble each other, Lachyquinum and Ignatia? So um, they both tend to be, particularly in terms of the, the female patients, they tend to be on, on the one hand intense, they come across mm -hmm. like with intensity, mm -hmm. and on the other hand detached. So they don't, <coughs> they don't reveal their emotions to you, but there is an intensity that you can feel about mm -hmm. this person. One way they will avoid feeling emotions directly is by being dramatic. When mm -hmm. someone is dramatic, it looks like they're very emotional, but in fact, they're avoiding emotion by acting out and both Ignatia and um, Lachyman will be dramatic mm -hmm. to, to avoid feeling the emotion. They're both quite proud. There's, just, there's a, an arrogance or a pride seen in both these types. And they both have very sharp intellects. I've treated several Lachyman patients who studied law in order to work with the United Nations so they could work at a very high level with mm -hmm. helping humanity. And this kind of very sharp intellect is seen in both Ignatia and Mm -hmm. They both have a tendency to stand up to men. They're not intimidated by men. They will stand up to men and they will fight for what they want. Mm -hmm. So they will not mm -hmm. allow men to dominate. Okay. They're both very much in control and they're also controlling of other people. Okay. They both have a lot of suppressed grief. And no, that's the that's it. They okay. both have a lot of so that, thank you. So that so those were the similarities. So can you tell us how they differ each other at the mental level? So with Ignatius, you tend to have a, a gradual, slow closing down of the heart mm -hmm. as as relationships get more painful until eventually they're cut off, and then there tends to be a gradual warming up or healing as they open up, if they get healing. With lack of mind, it's, it tends to be an all or nothing thing. It's like they shut down and then everybody's blocked out or they will dramatically mm -hmm. open up if they trust. So there's this all or nothing quality to lack of mind. Mm -hmm. Single Ignatius is not often a single mother. It's uncommon, whereas it's very, very common with lack of mind. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, although Ignatius can be paranoid, it's not so much about the family. Um, in lack of mind, they tend to be paranoid about the family, that the, parent, that the family is against them, doesn't care about them. It's not, not such a typical feature in Ignatia. Okay. Um, in general, Ignatia is more ambitious, whereas Lachimanum is more humanitarian. Okay. Um, and of course, you have many, many lack issues mm. with Lachimanum, not many lack issues with Ignatia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you also mentioned that Platina can resemble Lachimanum psychologically. So how do they resemble each other? Well, one thing that's highly characteristic of both of these remedies is the delusion of grandeur. Mm -hmm. So when platinum becomes insane, or even when they're not insane, they have delusions of grandeur that they're on a mission from God. And we see, we see this ten, same tendency to be chosen out by God for a special purpose in lack humanum. So that's one very close similarity. Secondly, you actually do get psychosis or insanity in both of these remedies. Although in lack humanum, it's usually just postpartum after giving birth. Mm -hmm. um, 
both tend to be dominating when they're in relationships, whether it's a friendship or a romantic relationship, they tend to dominate. They both have brutal, what I call brutal emotional reactions. So they will hold things, hold, hold things in and then they will kind of explode or explode in anger or in tears. There's not a subtle gradation, there's a kind of brutal uh, emotional reaction. And they both have a tendency to feel alone in the world as well. Okay. Actually, one last similarity. Um, they're both very passionate and they're both intellectual. Okay. So, uh, also talking about Platina again, so how do they differ, like Humanum and Platina? So, kind of in the ways you'd expect, uh, because Platina is such an extreme remedy. So, generally, psychological stability is much less in Platina than it is in, in Lachimanum. Lachimanum only becomes psychotic postpartum, mm -hmm. otherwise they're not prone to psychosis. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, the sexuality is, tends to be either very high or zero in Platina, or it doesn't tend to be such an issue in Lachimanum. Mm -hmm. Paranoia is, is, is more of an issue with Platina than Lachimanum. Lachimanum has all the lack issues that Platina tends to lack. I have not seen Latina very often as a single mother, and they're very, very common in Lachimanum. And also you have this very specific delusion in Platina that they feel very large, they feel hu huge. You don't have these kind of delusions. They do, I mean, Lachimanum can feel one with God and special, but they don't actually physically feel huge like Platina does. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. So also talking about Lachimanum, many homeopaths seem to confuse it with Natrum muriaticum. So, in your experience, how do you, how these two remedies resemble each other? That they can be very similar, um, particularly on first acquaintance. If you don't know the lacks very well, you're very easily confused. Um, first of all, they're both very much in control, and they're both controlling of other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Secondly, they don't. Neither of them trust love. They both will tend to be suspicious of love and hold back because they don't trust love mm -hmm. and they're afraid of getting hurt. Thirdly, they both have this very high characteristic positive facade. They will smile when they're suffering mm -hmm. inside. So this false smile of always smiling and laughing is very characteristic of lac humanum and it's mm -hmm. okay. There's a formality and a politeness that goes along with this positive facade in both mm -hmm. natrum and in lac humanum, although natrum is even more formal. Yes. Um, and of course, they both will very much hold on to grief, so much so that neither of them can cry. They will both hold on so tightly to their sadness that they cannot cry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, sir, so, uh, also, uh, you said that lack humanum can resemble other lack remedies as well. So, please tell us about the differentials between the lack remedies. First of all, I'll just uh, cover the differences between natum muriaticum and lack humanum. Okay. So there's a tendency to paranoia in Lachimanum. They feel that people are not supporting them and maybe even against them. And this is not so, so clear. Not, I mean, Natum Muraticum might not feel supported, but they don't really paranoia. Secondly, Natum Muraticum is not very liable to be a single mother. It can happen, but it's not, it's not typical. They don't have this split between the spirituality and the world or, or between spirituality <coughs> and the body, which we see in Lachimanum. Mm -hmm. Natrum uh, muriaticum is not prone to psychosis. They're less idealistic, a lot less mm -hmm. idealistic than Lachimanum. And they don't have all the other lack issues that we mm -hmm. tend to see in Lachimanum. So now we'll talk about the other lacks. Yes. Um, so as I've said, Lachimanum tends to be one of the proud lacks. So this means they resemble Lach Felinum, mm -hmm. Lach Equinum, and Lach Leolinum, Lach because, they, because they tend to be proud. Out of these, I would say Lac Leonanum is the closest because Lac Leonanum is quite detached compared mm -hmm. to Aquinum and Thalinum. And Lac Humanum also tends to appear quite detached. Mm -hmm. uh, Lac Leonanum, of course, tends to be a victim of violence, which is not typical of Lac Humanum. Mm -hmm. Lac Humanum will often control, will often complain about emotional abuse, mm -hmm. but, but not typical of abuse. Uh, but this is an important point that I forgot to mention. In lack remedies in general, they will oft, very often talk about abuse. And they will use the actual word abuse, even if they've never been abused. They, yeah. they focus on abuse. Whether they're talking about relatives or friends that they're trying to help, whether they're talking about the world or talking about their own life, 
they're very focused on the issue of abuse and they will talk about abuse a lot. And this is equally true of Lachimanum um, as other lacks. Okay. Um, Lackley and iron is very often very overweight and it's not so typical of Lachimanum. And there's also a tendency to feel more sense of power and dominance in Lackley and Anum than in Lachimanum. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Lackley and Anum and Lack Felinum, they don't tend to have a history of psychosis, whereas Lack Humanum and Lack Equinum very often have a history of psychosis, but postpartum psychosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So, uh, sir, I think we, uh, the session is going great, but we are really running out of time. And I do want to take up a few questions by our live audience as well. So, uh, I'll cut this session a little short. So, I would request dear learners to comment in the chat with your questions now. We will begin the question and answer session in a minute. You can quickly send us your questions for Dr. Philip Bailey and he'll help you understand the lack of remedies even better. Uh, so until they are, you know, typing those questions, can you say a little about the course that or that we have done on THA with you? Yes. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know if I can remember all the modules, but there are ten modules on comparative yes. materia medica. One, I, I think it's two modules on the lack remedies. So yes. we'll cover everything I've talked about today in much more detail. Mm -hmm. And then there's, as I mentioned, there's a module on comparison of sepia, lacrylinum and carcinostinum. Mm -hmm. There's a module covering the psychotic remedies, not not the S psychotic, but the P psychotic. So the remedies for insanity, such as um, platina and stramonium baratum. How to differentiate? Mm -hmm. Because these appear very, very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. there's, a there's a module on differentiating the baratas and the calcareous, because these mm -hmm. salts can be extremely similar. There's a module on differentiating the ferrums and the Kali salts. Is it ferums, carlies, and well, anyway, ferums and carlies because they can be very similar to each other. Okay. Uh, there's the module on differentiation of psychotic remedies, the other psychotic remedies that is, medorinum, uh, bromium, and what's the other third one? <laughs> I've forgotten. Uh, thuya, medorinum, bromium, and thuya, the three okay. psychosis remedies. So uh, 10 modules will cover a large mm -hmm. number of remedies, over 50 remedies, looking at differential diagnosis and also presenting some actual cases where these remedies have been used. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so I would like to inform all our learners that uh, THA has come up with an offer only for the webinar attendees today. So you can avail a flat 40% off on the course by Dr. Philip Bailey on comparative homeopathic psychology on our website. You can visit us, enroll in the course and use the coupon code LFH40 at the checkout. This offer only stands for two days, that is today and tomorrow. I'm typing in the chat with the coupon code. You can avail it and it's just for you. Uh, also, let's uh, let's start the question answer session, sir. We already have been flooded with the questions. I don't think we can take up all of them, but I'll try to cover as many as possible. There were a lot of questions. Okay, let me quickly go through. So you have already talked about lacleonidum and carcinosin. This is covered. So. Okay, so uh, a learner wants to know, uh, can you please elucidate a little about the physical symptoms of lack group of remedies? Well, they, they do differ quite a lot between the different lack remedies, so mm -hmm. it's not so easy to generalize. I mean, there are some generalities, for instance, they may have breast problems, problems with breastfeeding, problems okay. with breast tenderness and pain before periods, mm -hmm. um, fluid retention. These are some of the common mm -hmm. Lack features, but there are very many features that they're individual to the individual lack remedy. For instance, yes, so. um, lack felinum tends to have a lot of problems with herpes, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, I've also seen this in lack humanum, that there are two remedies that suffer from herpes. If you look at lack um, equinum, they have a lot of neck problems. And this, if you think about the horse with a very long neck, yes. it's not surprising they have a lot of neck problems. Mm -hmm. If you look at lack anionum, um they will tend to get acne, for instance, very strongly. So you, you can't really generalize too much between the physicals. You have to mm -hmm. study each lack remedy individually. Yes, sir. 
Thank you, sir. So a learner wants uh, you to differentiate between sexuality of lacaninum, sepia, and carcinosinum. Oh, I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Lacaninum, sepia, and carcinosinum. Okay. So let's start with the easy one, I think, which is sepia. Okay. Sepia does not have the lack of sexuality that it's famous for. It has a kind of normal sexuality if mm -hmm. the relationship is healthy and they lose interest in sex when the relationship's unhealthy. So when they're too dominated by chores and, and the partner is not helping out and they don't feel respected and heard, they lose interest in sexuality and it becomes zero. So that's the typical sepia sexuality. It's quite a normal, healthy sexuality, which then fades away as the relationship okay. deteriorates. Okay. Carson Asylum, um, to be honest, I haven't seen anything particularly unusual in in Carson Asylum with sexuality. Um, it's a it's a, it actually is a little bit like sepia in the sense that on the one polarity you have very passionate Carson Asylums who are not very suppressed. And these Carson Asylums resemble Metarinum and Lactulinum mm -hmm. and they will be passionate physically, uh, mm -hmm. sexually as well. And on the other hand, you have very rest suppressed calcium asylums. And here the sex drive is also suppressed, a bit like mm -hmm. sepia. Yeah, so it really depends on how much emotional suppression. So that's a little bit, bit like sepia, but it's different because it's about how much they're numbing inside. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then the black canine, black canine, again, I haven't seen, I mean, one very specific thing I've seen in, in black canine is Quite often, lack remedies are remedies for sexual abuse because abuse is such a big theme in lack cases. Mm -hmm. And when you feel sexual abuse, very often there's, there's very little sex drive. So I've seen lack canine cases yeah. where there's very little sex drive because of abuse. But otherwise, I find um, lack canine is quite a passionate type. It's a psychotic type with an S. So they have a lot of passion. And if they feel safe, the sex drive is relatively high and, and relatively passionate. Uh, lack filinum. Was that for Lionel Morgan? No. Uh, so it was uh, just a second. CPA, yes, it was like canine. 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 Yeah, good. Yes. So also a learner wanted to know he, uh, is a surrogacy can be a strong reason for a lack theme? You mean since you that talked if they about want a to... single mother, uh, since you talked about a single mother, can surrogacy also be a cause of, you know, a lack theme? I mean, I tend to find that someone is born constitutionally lack. So mm -hmm. it is not because that they uh, want to be a surrogate or want to have surrogacy. Okay. That doesn't create a lack constitution, but it, it it is quite likely that lack individuals will seek surrogacy because they don't trust men, for instance, or because they're mm -hmm. single mothers. So they are more likely to seek surrogacy than other constitutions. Okay. Okay. Some uh, learner want. Some learners want to know that uh, will they get a recording? Yes, you will. Don't worry. Uh, you, if you have missed out anything in today's, uh, you know, event, you will receive a replay link 24 hours later on your mail. So don't worry. You will not miss out on anything that Dr. Bailey said. Also, okay. Uh, you've already covered this question. So, okay, a learner wants to know how can we differentiate lack humanum with causticum? That's a good question because causticum is so humanitarian, mm -hmm. so idealistic and humanitarian. <clears throat> so, first of all, I've tended to find that the causticums that are extremely humanitarian are more often the male causticums, um, mm -hmm. and most of my lack humanum cases are women. So, that's the first difference in my practice. Secondly, um, causticum tends to be very politically active. They tend to seek political solutions to inequality. And this is not the typical approach of lachimanum. Lachimanum might, um, what's the word? They will become, I've forgotten the word. They will <laughs> agitate in, in favor of the environment or in favor of human rights, but they don't actually get involved in the political process like um, Corsica was. That's a second difference. The third difference is, of course, you have the other lack themes in lack humanum mm -hmm. that you don't have in Corsica, like the extreme relationships with the mother. Yes. Also, Corsica, although they're very caring, they're not codependent. So in other mm -hmm. words, they will look after their own needs, whereas lack mm -hmm. will neglect their own needs mm -hmm. because they're codependent. Mm -hmm. And finally, the delusion of grandeur 
you don't tend to get that delusion of grandeur in, 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 in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, some people want to know where they can get your books from. So you can buy from Peach and Publishers itself. We have all his books available with us. Okay. Uh, I guess we have run out of time, sir. We've already crossed our time. I've taken up a lot of your time today. Uh, so let's do one thing. Let's wind up here. I really apologize to those whose questions I couldn't take up. But maybe if Dr. Bailey will allow us, we'll come back with another session with him. Uh, since we learned a lot today, and we'd love to have you again, sir, with us. So uh, thank you so much, sir, for such an enriching and informative experience. A very warm gratitude on behalf of THA and on behalf of BJ and RX. And uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Would you like to say something to our learners? Well, as I've said, this is the first webinar I've given. I very much enjoyed it. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Ria, and I'd like to thank the Homeopathic Academy. And thanks so much to everybody for taking part. Thank you so much. It was an honor to have you here. Thank you, dear learners, everyone who joined us here today. And don't worry, you will get a replay link. Everybody's asking me that they missed it and they want a re recording of it. You will get it. You will absolutely get it. We will not, uh, you know, uh, let it, you know, uh, miss anybody. We will, we will not let you miss it. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Keep learning. Keep improving, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir.